Hello students, welcome to the discussion. This would be the first video in our high impact series videos which would be launching for the upcoming prelims 2023. And this video is about, as the title say, it's about Project Tiger. And this has been in use because we have completed 50 years since the inception of Project Tiger. So very important topic with respect to prelims. Let's start the discussion. Now, few facts about tiger. It's a, it's a national animal and it is listed in the Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and IUCN, it is listed as endangered and also in the Appendix 1 of sites list and it's a top, top predator in the food chain. So, in the balancing of the food chain and the ecosystem, it plays a crucial role to keep the population in check. Now, what was the need to start a, such a separate program focusing on tigers. So background, first most significant, there were about 40,000 tigers in 1900, but by 1972, around 1800 were left. So there was a panic among the wildlife enthusiasts, conservationists with respect to tiger conservation. And also we had the bad experience with respect to cheetah, which was declared extinct post independence. So based on this, Several, uh, you can say, wildlife enthusiasts, and enthusiasts, they requested the government to focus on the conservation of tiger, given the significance it holds in the maintaining the balance in ecosystem. Among them, the most significant one is Dr. Kailas Sankla. He was also the first director of Project Tiger in India. He played a crucial role in convincing the government of the time. So it was launched, the program was launched on April 1st, 1973 from Zim Carpet National Park. Initially, there were nine tiger reserves and now there are 54 such tiger reserves in India. Now, it's a centrally sponsored scheme, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and the nodal agencies, National Tiger Conservation Authority. We will see about this NTCA in coming slides. Now, what are the objectives? So it is easy to guess objectives because since the name Project Tiger suggests, it is about tiger conservation, conservation of the habitats where it resides, and also safeguarding against uh, the pre pressures, biotic and aquatic pressures that are causing the decline of the tigers. The most important objective, which often neglected in the discussion is this one, to safeguard the rights of tribals and local people living near tiger reserves. So this point is very, very important because whenever we talk about tiger conservation or declaring an area as national park or wildlife sanctuary, often the tribals are the first victims because they face eviction. However, many of our schemes like Project Tiger, they have a specific provision or specific objective to ensure that the conservation doesn't hamper the rights of tribals. This point you can use in your mains or also UPSC can give which are the following are the objectives of Project Tiger, and most of the people get confused because they think that it's own, it, the scheme talks about only tigers, but there is an objective which says that to safeguard the rights of tribals and local people living near tiger reserves. So please remember this. Now, what is the strategy adopted to, for the tiger reserves? Core buffer area strategy. So there would be a core area and there would be a buffer area. So this core area generally enjoys national park status or wildlife sanctuary status. And buffer area is generally a mixture of forest and non-forest area. So that if there is increase in population or there will be a spillover effect, this buffer area ensures that tiger population isn't not stressed. So core zone. So it's kept free of biotic disturbances. There won't be any human disturbances or any other disturbances that violate the privacy of tigers. The, who, who will notify those areas as core zones? They are notified by state government and in consultation with the expert committee. And in this context, you, you also need to know one another term called as critical wildlife habitats. Very, very important term. So there is a slight difference with respect, a legal difference with respect to what is core area and what is critical wildlife habitats. Now, this core area we define in terms of wild, uh, Wildlife Protection Act, sorry, Wildlife Protection Act. 1972, whereas the critical wildlife habitats, it also served the same purposes as core area, but it was defined in the context of Forest Rate Acts 2006. Now, Forest FRA 2006 says that these are those areas of national parks, not only tiger reserves, they can be national park or sanctuaries, where the basic objective is that 
they are those areas are kept free from human disturbances for the purpose of wildlife conservation so remember this point core area is with respect to project tiger defined under wildlife protection act whereas critic and they are notified by state government whereas critical wildlife habitat is it was defined in forest right act 2006 and they are notified by ministry of environment and forest often 2 3 years back there was a discussion with respect to this core area and critical wildlife habitat because a certain reserve was declared as tiger reserves and some area was declared as critical wildlife habitat so several tribal right activists they said that declaring an area as critical wildlife habitats without ensuring the rights of tribals recognized is a violation of forest right act 2006 now we are not we don't need all those discussion now the important point is core area wildlife protection act declared by state government and critical wildlife habitat by ministry of environment and forest under fra 2006 now both core area and critical wildlife ha habitat they serve the same purpose this point you need to remember very important from prelims perspective and buffer area as i said it is an area peripheral to critical tiger habitat or core area and here is some sort of human activities permitted not every other activity only some sort of human activities permitted now let's see what are the successes of project tiger as i said by 1972 around 1800 tiger reserves tigers were there from 40000 in 1900s so this project tiger was relatively successful in increasing the number of tigers like 2018 census according to 2018 tiger census there were around 2961 and also india globally also around 80% of tiger population is in india it is also a contribution because of this project tiger so globally number of tigers rose from 3159 to 3819 to 2016 according to wildlife fund and global tiger forum and also in several legal measures administrative measures were taken like form of illegal animal trading was banned and declaring declaring of project as tiger as a national animal these were all the successes of project tiger and it's often declared as most successful project in the world now as of today it covers an area of 71000 km square and of the total dense forest area one third of it is covered by project tiger reserves that is the significance of this project tiger and what are the challenges first development projects so often you would have heard about this de debate development versus nature so there is an always this debate continues so large scale development projects according to some wildlife enthusiasts it is said that though number of tigers have increased of late some tiger reserves have reached re carrying capacity some tiger reserves are re tiger reserves are, are beyond the carrying capacity it means say for example say one tiger reserve is there it has some 100 square kilometer area and some prey prey in the sense uh, the tiger kills some prey and survives so some prey some certain prey prey amount is there now beyond a point say say initially some two tigers are there subsequently four six and with given the area and amount of prey this tiger reserve can only sustain eight tigers once this critical limit is crossed we say that the tiger reserve has crossed its carrying capacity according to different surveys many of the tiger reserves are sir are, uh, are beyond this carrying capacity one that is one major issue and second is development projects these are again hindrances for the successful successful carrying forward of project tiger next invasive species invasive species means species that are not actually part of that ecosystem they are bought from outside or introduced from external ecosystems they are not native to the ecosystems so they hamper the ecosystem biodiversity with for example lanthana in zim carbet national park and other national parks lanthana is most common invasive species it is threatening the local biodiversity and as i said tiger sits on the top of the top predator species so once these lower food chain animals get disturbed tiger also gets disturbed and implementation of forest right act already i said that there was debate with respect to declaring an area as tiger reserves and the protection of tribal right tribal rights and human animal conflict you would have heard discussion about some tigers being labeled as man eaters and tigers entering into human areas so this these are all the challenges to take forward the project tiger now so the status is as i said 54 tiger reserves as of jan 2023 cross 18 tiger range states 
So this is very important point. How they give in prelims is question. They will give statement as all of the Indian states have at least one tiger reserves or all of the, there are tigers at, in all of the Indian states. Then that statement would be wrong because only 18 tiger in states in India are there. The largest is Nagarjuna Sri Salem Tiger Reserve. It is spread across Telangana state and Andhra Pradesh. And in Telangana, it is also called as Amraba Tiger Reserve. And smallest is Amana, Amangar Tiger Reserve in Uttar Pradesh is the smallest tiger reserve. And states with maximum tiger reserves are both Mah Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. They have six each. And Karnataka, Tamil Nadu has five each. So this is the map. So this small homework from my side. Just identify those states where there are no tiger reserves and also UTs. Okay. Now, as I said, National Tiger Conservation Authority is a nodal authority in the implementation of Project Tiger. It is a statutory body under which ministry? Ministry of Environment. And it was established by amending the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 in 2006. And it administers Project Tiger. It was established in 2005 in, on the recommendations of Tiger Task Force. And who is the chairman of this committee? Ministry of Environment and Forest. Very, very important point. Statutory body under Ministry of Environment. It was established on the recommendation of Tiger Task Force Committee. And Ministry of Environment and Forest is the, is the chairperson. Now, steps taken to conserve Tiger Reserve. So, as I said that there are some successes of Project Tiger in my earlier slide. So, what are the steps that led to such a success? First, Amendment of Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Because we established separate National Tiger Conservation Authority and Crime Control Bureau, Tiger and other endangered species, Crime Control Bureau, and setting up of Tiger Conservation Foundation and under the chairmanship of different chief ministries, special tiger protection force. And also we are implementing Project Tiger, apart from that, integrated development of wildlife habitats, of which tiger is an integral part. Through this, we are giving financial and technical support to the states. And global initiatives, global tiger forum. These are all initiatives taken to conserve tiger at international level. It was established in 1994 and its headquarters in New Delhi. It meets every three years. Next, it is the only intergovernmental body to save the tiger worldwide, very important point. And there are 13 tiger range countries. It means tigers are distributed across 13 countries. You also need to remember those countries. Let's see what are those countries. You can remember the mnemonic as BBIN, LMCV are teams, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, BBIN, LMCV, Laos, Malaysia, Cambodia, Vietnam, Russia. Next, Thailand, India, Indonesia, Myanmar, and China. These are 13 tiger range countries. So you basically can give options which of the following are the tiger range countries. They can give some of, one, one of the option, some of these options from here and the country which is not which does not belong here so please mark it up next global tiger initiatives this is very very important initiatives apart from global tiger forum it was launched in 2008 it's an alliance of not just only governments but also civil society organizations several scientific communities in, in earlier it was only restricted to tigers in 2013 it also included snow leopards under its objectives now its partners included Global Environmental Facility, World Bank. And again, this initiative is led by 13 Tiger Range countries. Now, in 2010, these countries, they have assembled at an international tiger forum where at St. Petersburg in Russia, they have adapted a declaration, which we call as St. Petersburg Declaration. So in St. Petersburg Declaration, which we call as Global Tiger Recovery Program, they have adopted one important objective, that is doubling of tiger reserves, which we call as TX2. So by 2022, to double the tiger reserves with base year at 2006, from 3,200 to 7,000 by 2022. So each of these tiger range countries, they need to double the existing population from 2006. So the goal was set by 
set up by World Wildlife Fund and Global Tiger Initiative and Global Tiger Forum. That's why it is called as St. Petersburg Declaration or Global Tiger Recovery Program or TX2. Now, India has already achieved it. Even before 2022, India has already achieved the doubling of tiger population. Now, another, another initiative is Conservation Assured Tiger Standards. Now, these Global Tiger Forum, what they excessively focus on, tiger conservation. But a separate initiative was started, which focused on tiger habitats. Because only if tiger habitats are good or safe, where there is adequate prey, then only tigers would survive. So they focused on tiger habitats. So they, these are nothing but set of standards to check whether the tiger habitat is sufficient enough, sufficient enough or uh, efficient enough to conserve the tiger species. It was launched in 2013. It is also a part of TX2. The long-term goal is to ensure safe heavens for tigers. Since it has set some standards, it will ensure, it will measure each tiger habitat or tiger reserve to check whether those tiger reserve is meeting some the, the standards set by these initiatives. In India, there are 14 tiger reserves that received this accreditation by CATS initiative. These are these. Sakura, Kanha, Panna, and Madhya Pradesh, Kench in Maharashtra, Valmiki Tiger Reserve in Bihar, Dudva in Uttar Pradesh, Sundarbans in West Bengal, Parambikulam in Kerala, Bandipur in Karnataka, Mudumalai Annamalai in Tamil Nadu, Manas, Kaziranga, and Dorang in Assam. Now, after this, another important topic is Tiger Census. Every four years, the NTCA conducts a tiger census in India. The first such census was conducted in 2006. So as a part of this census, we identify how many number of tigers are there and also their density and the diversity in the area where they are residing. All these factors are uh, identified in tiger census. It is conducted by NTCA. First one is 2006. Now, latest one, 2018. So generally, while measuring this project census, we divide the total country into five landscapes. These are the five landscapes. Central Indian landscapes and Eastern Ghat, Western Ghat, Shivalik Hills and Ganesic Plains, Northeastern Hills and Brahmaputra Plains, Sundarbans. So of all these five landscapes, majority of it are in Central Indian landscape. And least are in Sundarbans. Now in that census, the top performing states are Madhya Pradesh. It had 526 followed by Karnataka and Uttarakhand. And most increase in population was witnessed by Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, and Karnataka. So most tigers are in Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, whereas increase in tiger population, Madhya Pradesh, and Maharashtra. And Corbett Tiger Reserve in Uttarakhand has highest number of tigers. And though some areas are declared tiger reserves, there was no tiger found in Buxa Tiger Reserve in West Bengal, Palamau Tiger Reserve in Jharkhand, Dampa Tiger Reserve in Mizoram. So there was no tiger reserve. It shows that something is amiss there. Now, techniques generally used are Pugmark census techniques. So each, based, this is called as Pugmark. Based on that, we identify whether it is a male or female, that is a child or adult tigers. This is one technique. And other techniques are camera trapping techniques, DNA fingerprinting. From there, scats. Scats means basically tiger poop. And M stripes. It was, in, it was started in 2010 by NTCA. So it's basically app-based tigers conducting tiger sensors using GIS and GPS technology. So these are these this video we have covered everything about tigers. So just once you go through this video, I get, uh, I say that there, there is no need to go again and check back with respect to tiger sensors or uh, other initiatives with respect to tiger. I hope this video was useful. And if you have any suggestions, please drop. We will also make videos on those topics. Thank you.